lays a layer of powder down and then goes across and just prints out what you want to print. We have a, a basically a print head just like in a printer that's in the back. And then the print head uh, has a binder in it and a color in it. So as, it, as this, this comes across the, the, uh, the stone, this is actually stone, it's just powder. And as it comes across, it just prints like a regular printer does. It just prints layer by layer by layer, putting down a binder, putting down a color. So these are real helpful because a lot of times the surgeons want um, vascular models so they can see uh, if there's an aneurysm or something. And so because if we get the right kind of uh, image, like a CT scan that has um, contrast in it where it shows the arteries and the veins, then we can actually separate out those arteries and veins and color them a different color. It'll come off like this on the machine which is kind of, if you think of it like a greenware on ceramics, it's kind of like that. So this is relatively fragile. So what you have to do is you have to do something to bones process this. So we have two options here. Uh, generally what you do is you actually coat it in super glue and it makes it solid on the outside and it makes it relatively hard. Or you can actually pull resin through the whole thing and we can do that sometimes. The nice thing about these models, if you do resin through it, is then they cut like bone. Uh, the beauty of doing it layered like that is if you do cut this like bone, what you would see in the bone is what you would see when you cut. Generally when somebody orders something, it comes to us and then it goes to Dr. Leo Kouris, who's my PhD biomedical engineer. And he evaluates it on how, how difficult it is. If it's a very difficult one, then he might do it. If not, he may put it out to one of the other technicians. And they basically uh, will take whatever the image is and put it into a format so that it can be printed. Or they'll, they'll put it into a format to design something if they're being asked to design something. Uh, and then once they get that done, then they move it over in the, to uh, our metals guy. And actually, he's our, our production guy. So he brings it over and puts it on the machines and has the machines build it. And in this particular one, what we have is a, it's a patient that had a pretty, pretty bad injury to his face. The patient has been repaired to an extent, but obviously he's going to need more surgeries. So before the next surgery that he's going to have, the surgeon wants really just a, a model of the state of which is in as, as, as we speak. And that, that allows him to do a lot of pre-planning, pre-surgical planning. So in this model, I'm making more of a pre-surgical model. I'm, I'm not designing anything. I'm just really just giving them what they have. Uh, over here, I actually did design a, a, a part, an implantable. So this patient, as you can see right here, is actually missing a big part of his head. Here I have, I have put back, you know, the, pretty much his missing part. So there's a few steps that go to that. After that, you know, we add the fixations so that it can actually be drilled into his uh, into his head. What we're trying to build in here is actually a prosthetic attachment um, for one of the uh, patients downstairs missing at least his right arm. He wants to be able to eat crabs. So we basically we took uh, a utensil that's used for crab eating. And we replicated that. We basically uh, we designed it in our uh, 3D imaging software, and then we took it and then we put it into here. So we basically it's a titanium apparatus, so he can eat crabs put on his arm. We basically take 3D images, and we take that image and we slice it all down into layers, uh, 50 micron or 70 micron layers, and we print it out in this machine here uh, in uh, titanium alloy powder. Uh, it uses an electron beam uh, to actually draw and melt the powder layer by layer. Uh, we've had a lot of unusual stuff with working with the prosthetics lab downstairs. We've built attachments for them to fire guns, to fly an airplane. Um, we're trying to develop something for a guy to shoot a bow and arrow. Um, you know, there are a lot of unique attachments we're making. You know, to, uh, to play hockey, to climb, to go ice climbing, to go rock climbing. I mean, you need these guys are thinking of it, we're designing it, printing it out, they're trying it out, making some modifications and printing out another one if needed.